Hey there, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be continuing our bow and arrow series by finishing up the functionality within the actual bow script. In the last video, we set up our input as well as wrote a lot of the variables and some of the functions that we're going to need within the bow. But hopefully, if we work quick enough, we'll be able to finish it within this video. So let's go ahead and let's get started. And here we are within the bow script, where we're going to need to create an update function, we have to fill out our pull and our release, we'll have to create a new function for calculating our pull as well as the function for firing the arrow. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is writing our update function. So we're just going to write private void update. And then we'll write the signatures for our other functions that we need. Below that, we're going to be making a new function called calculate pull, where we're going to be passing in a transform that we're going to be calling pull hand. And then we'll just return zero for right now. And then at the very bottom, we're going to create another function that we're just going to be calling fire arrow. Well, not just arrow, fire. There we go. And that function is actually going to be pretty simple. A lot of that functionality is going to be in the arrow itself, but we need something to sort of set our current arrow to null once we fire it. So we can scroll down here. And let's focus on our update. And the first thing that we're going to be having is an if statement, where we're going to be checking to see if we have a pulling hand and if we have an arrow. So we're going to write if, we'll do a null check for pulling hand or m current arrow. Meaning if we don't have a pulling hand or a current arrow, then we're going to want to return and not execute any functionality below this. And the pulling hand is something we're going to be setting up in our pull function. And it's basically going to be the hand that's going to be close to the notch when the trigger is pulled and how we'll be calculating how far back the user is pulling the bow. And you'll see a little bit more of that when we actually get into the pull function. And then current arrow is basically saying, Hey, don't update this. If we are in between arrows, since we have our create arrow on a wait time, if we've just fired one and we need to wait, a half a second, we don't need to calculate anything below this or set our animator, which we'll be doing an update as well. And then the next two things we need to do is set our pull value. And that's going to be set by calling calculate pull and passing in our pulling hand. And if you remember in the last video, we we're using a blend tree set to direct for setting up our, for basically setting the position of the string. So what we're going to need to do with this pull value is make sure that it's a value between zero and one. So it works well within our blend tree. So we just need to clamp it and you could probably get away with not doing this, but it's just kind of to be safe. Let's do a clamp. We'll put our pull value. We'll put zero and then we'll put one. And there we go. And then once we have that pull value, we want to set our animator. And it'll be set float. And if you remember that parameter in there is called blend. And we're just passing in that zero to one value. There we go. And that's actually everything for our update. But below this calculate pull is going to be doing a lot of work. So let's scroll down to that. And the first thing that we're going to do is get our direction. And we're going to do that by creating a new vector three that we're going to be calling direction. We'd be setting it to our end position minus our start position. And if you remember, these are the two transforms we have childed to our bow so we can calculate um, where our hand is between these two points. And then we want to get the magnitude of that. So we'll do float magnitude. So we'll just get that vector and get its magnitude and we'll be storing this because we will be using it again down below. And then we're going to get that direction and we're going to normalize it. So it'll be a value between zero and one, not normalized. So we have that magnitude between our start and our end position. And now we want to get the difference between our pulling hand and our start position. So we'll have another vector three We'll call it difference. And we'll be using our pull hand dot position. We'll be subtracting our start position. And then within return, we'll be creating our dot product. 
of our difference, our direction, and then we're going to divide that by our magnitude. So I guess the question now is, what is this actually doing? And a simple way of explaining it is we're using our dot product because we want to see the similarities between our two vectors, our difference and our direction. So we're checking to see how much we're pulling back as well as if the direction that it's going in is related to that of our end position and our start position. And then we're dividing that value we're getting from the dot product by the magnitude. And so that if we're actually pulling back properly on the bow and arrow and not pushing it forward or really far off to the side, we should get a value between zero and one. Since our magnitude is going to be that complete distance and our difference is only going to be a small subsection of that. And that's a really basic explanation. If you want to know more about how the dot product works, there are plenty of videos that can explain it a lot better than I can. And with that basically out of the way, we only need to fill out our pull release and our fire arrow. And since our fire arrow is already expanded, let's just fill that out. We only have to put in one line or a few lines because we have to put it to do as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is put it to do here where it's going to be call fire from arrow. Since we haven't written that function yet, we're just putting this here for now. And then we want to set our current arrow to null. So every time we fire an arrow, we're going to tell our current arrow to go, hey, go fly away. And then we set it to null. So then we can create a new one. And let's expand our pool here. Let's scroll down. And for our pull, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to be checking the distance between our current hand position and the start position. And then we'll be setting that pulling hand that we were using previously. And I kind of did a little cheap thing where I'm using vector three distance as a sort of a substitute for an actual interaction system. If you wanted to switch this out with a collider or something like that, you're more than welcome to do that. But this was just a lot simpler. So I didn't need to have another script that was detecting to see if the hand was going to be there. If I was going to do that, then I probably would have an actual inter interaction system for doing that. So we have our float distance. And we'll do a vector three distance. And we'll do our hand position and our start position. And like I said, all this is basically doing is when you pull the trigger, it's saying, hey, is the hand close enough to the notch? If it's not, then don't do anything. So it kind of behaves like a really simple collider. And we didn't make that grab threshold in the previous video. So we're just going to say, hey, is the, if the distance is greater than our grab threshold, then we want to return. But if we are close enough to our notch within the grab threshold, then we want to set our pulling hand to the current transform that we're passing in. And that's actually it for the pull function. Let's expand our release. And this is going to be occurring once we let go of the trigger. And the first thing that we need to do is check to see if we're pulling back far enough. So we do an if statement. So it's going to be if our pull value, and this is just a number that I put here, which is 0.25. If you may want your user to have to pull back a little bit further for it to actually launch the arrow, you can make a variable at the top or just change this number here. But I'm just saying, hey, if it's more than 0.25, which is going to be that distance that we're calculating, so they've pulled it a quarter of the way, we wanted to actually fire the arrow, which is going to be the function that right below this. And then once we do that, we want to clear a few things. So we've let go of the arrow, it's flying off. We want to clear out our pulling hand. Since obviously it's let go of the string, so we're no longer pulling it. We want to reset our pull value. And we'll set that to zero. And then we want to reset our animator. We'll be doing the same thing as we did before. Set float, blend, and we'll be just setting that to zero. And then once we've done that, we need to create a new arrow. But we do need to have an if statement because since we have this pull value here with that needs to check to see if we've pulled it back far enough, we may let go and the arrow may still be there. So if we do not have an arrow, we want to create a new one. So we don't have a current arrow. So we want to start that code routine for creating an arrow. And if you remember before in start, we set it to zero seconds, but for right now, I'll just set it to a 
quarter of a second. And you can play around with this value to see what works best for you. All right, and that pretty much does it for our bow script. Now let's go back into Unity to see if we need to update anything in the scene really quick before we test this. All right, so now that we're back in Unity, we need to do a few things. One of those things being a screw up that I had made when I was developing the project. And if we go to our bow here and we expand it, and then we expand our bow base and go to our socket, this should actually be named Notch. For some reason, when I was developing this, I thought this was just some empty game object, but it's actually part of the rigging. And since I renamed it, it basically broke the rig. I don't know how this got into the template project, but oh well. So what we're gonna have to do to get this to work is rename it to Notch. And I think it's a change that I forgot to apply to the prefab, because if we go to our bow and arrow folder, we go to our meshes, and go to our static mesh bow and just drag one of those into the scene and we expand this really quick we'll see that it's named notch so we just need to make sure that these two names are the same and then we can delete that and then we also need to child our bow to our controller so if we go to our camera rig we'll expand that expand our tracking space and since i'm right-handed i'm going to be childing it to our left hand anchor if you are left-handed you may need to switch this just keep that in mind just make sure you have the right opposite hand set up within the bow. So I'm going to collapse the bow, click and drag that onto there. And then you just wanna make sure that the position is all zeroed out. And there we go. And what I'll also do while we're in here is we can unpack this prefab, just so we're not applying any changes to the original prefab. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and build this out to my Oculus Quest to see if it works. And it seems to be working pretty well. I don't have any representation for the hands at this point, but if you put your hands close together and pull the trigger, the jawstring should follow the hand. And if we let go, everything should reset pretty well. But notice no matter how far you pull the string back, we can't fire the arrow because we haven't written that functionality yet. And we'll be doing that in the next video. And it's a pretty simple script, so we should be able to get it all done pretty quick. And I think that about does it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below, and I'll see you in the next one. But before I go officially, I'd like to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Well, it's actually, the list is getting pretty long, so it's going to be not a quick, but, you know, kind of an average length. But I'd first like to thank Eric Patrix, Sivan Ati, Augusto Marquette, Pierre Franson, Adrian Soto, and David Fufu. I'd also like to thank Evan Buxton, Shane Nielsen, Keith Bradner, Darren Swords, Omar Vera, Zach Ellis, and Frederick H. Thank you for all your support. I really honestly appreciate it. I probably couldn't do this without you. Now the video is really over. I'll see you all in the next one.